Hi, I'm Sarish Sudekran, and in this video, let's look at the storage options for the pocket camera. First of all, I need to clear a couple of things. This camera is not given to me permanently by Blackmagic Design. I apologize if there is a misunderstanding from my previous video. This is a loaner camera. I have to give it back, and I only have it for about a week. I possibly should have clarified in the earlier video, but that's something I wanted to get out of the way first. Uh, a couple of quick questions that people have asked me that I can answer before we get into the storage is first, screen brightness. Now, as you can see on the screen, uh, you can toggle to the menu option and monitor. And right now the screen is at 50% brightness. Okay, I have a waveform monitor that I'm gonna look at and I'm gonna look at the brightest part of the screen and it'll tell me what the brightness is. So I'm gonna increase it now to 100% and this is the maximum brightness. In comparison, I am going to show you the iPhone 8 Plus and I hope I cover the screen completely. There you are. This is the iPhone 8 Plus and this is not full brightness. This is full brightness. Let me just cover the monitor and you can see uh, there's a big difference. So what I'm getting from the iPhone 8 Plus is the widest point is at about 90 IR, and when I take it out, the brightest is at up about roughly 90 IRE as well. So what you can see from this test is both the iPhone and the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera has similar brightness. So the iPhone 8 Plus is rated for about 625 nits. So I think at full brightness, the LCD is at least 500 nits. So it's great. Uh, I've used it a couple of times outside and I have to say that uh, I didn't find, you know, looking at the back LCD a problem. The off-axis viewing is great as well. So I just wanted to clear that and get it out of the way. The next thing I wanted to address quickly is the fan noise. Many of you have asked me about the fan noise and I have to tell you, you have to put your ears against the camera to hear it. I haven't tested it in a studio setting. Right now is the quietest that I can get in my room. I've switched off the air conditioner, but uh, it's, not, it's a non-issue for me so far. So coming to storage, in the last video, we got exclamation marks when I was recording sometimes and I hadn't read the manual. By the way, the manual was published a day after I made the video. Of course, I should have still read the manual and maybe it was not totally fair to have published that part of the video before I knew what I was getting into. So I made this video as quickly as possible to rectify things. Another thing that was confusing was the data rates published on the Blackmagic Design website are for 30 frames per second in 4K. The thing is, when if you want to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second in RAW, the data rates go over 500 megabytes per second and that will test any card. Based on the Blackmagic Design speed test, you get an app that you can download. Based on those tests, none of the media cards that I tested should work with lossless RAW. So let's uh, get that out of the way first. I have a CFast card on camera and you can see it's full. So what I'm gonna do, which I should have done in the previous video, is to format it. So you have the option that says full. I'm gonna format the card. You have two options, OS X, which is HFS Plus, and the other is XFAT. Blackmagic Design recommends that you use HFS Plus because you also have the option of journaling, which means if the card is corrupted for some reason, you still have a chance of getting the uh, your data back. So they prefer uh, this over XFAT. So I'm going to go ahead and format it to this one. This will erase all data. Go ahead. And let's see how much time this takes. I'll repeat the step for every card, but I won't show it to you. So there you are. It just took about 10 seconds for a 64 gigabyte card. So now let's go back to the menu and select our options. It's going to be raw lossless, which is the highest quality, 4K DCI, so you get the, the maximum data rate possible. The project frame rate is 60 frames per second, so it, the camera will record at 60 frames per second. We turn off off-speed recording, so we don't make any changes. We shoot in the highest dynamic range, which doesn't matter if you're shooting raw, and it's in CFast, and here you have the toggle, and everything else seems to be fine. So we can go back. I'm supposed to get about a minute on this uh, CFast card. 
So for this video, I'm going to record for the entire one minute. Let me hit the record button. And right now it is recording. So immediately you can see a red flash, which tells you that uh, the camera dropped frames, which means this CFast card is SanDisk Extreme Pro is not capable of reading 4K DCI in 60p. It's not. Now what we can do is try the next best thing, which is UHD, and try again. And as you can see, it's still red and the camera is recording for a few seconds. It shouldn't be, and it stops. So it records for a few seconds, but it stops because the camera has dropped frames. When the card shows red with the exclamation mark, that means it has drop frames. So it's pretty obvious that you cannot record 4K 60p in lossless. Now let's try 30p. This is Blackmagic's published specifications. And I'm gonna format the CFast card again, just to make sure that the data is cleared and we'll try it again. There you are, exit and try it once more. This time it seems to be okay. It turns red when it's recording, but there's no exclamation mark and the cameras continue to record. So I'm gonna let it roll for a minute. I'll fast forward it so you can check it out. So as you can see, it can do up to 30 frames, no problem. Now I'm gonna quickly format the card again. And we can try three to one in 4K at 60 frames per second. Let's record. This seems to be doing better, but let's just carry on. I'll fast forward and it looks like it does great. So you have the limit for CFast, which is 4K 30p in lossless or 4K 60p at three to one. Anything under that should work fine as well. Now let's move on to the SD card. So instead of selecting CFast, we can select the SD card and I'll format the SD card again to HFS plus, format the card, and let's see how much time it takes. Just a few seconds. I have about three minutes again on this card. Now this is 60p, 4K DCI at three to one, and technically it shouldn't because it has a much lower write speed, but so far it's okay. Right, and there you are, it's drop frames at about a 45 second mark. So with uh, the UHS-2 class card, you still cannot record in three to one raw. Let's try four to one, same thing, 60 frames per second, and hit record. You should only be using cards recommended by Blackmagic Design. They haven't updated their site to what compact flash cards or SSDs are supported just yet, but I'm sure by the time the camera ships, that information will be available. So make sure you look at that list and only buy the cards listed, otherwise you're gonna have problems in the field. Now this has gone on for a few seconds more, so I'm assuming maybe, oh no. Now there you are again, drop frames. So you cannot record raw even at four to one with in at 60 frames per second. Let's try 30 frames per second, which should be half the data rate. And I'll just try three to one. And there you are, drop frames again. So even at 30 frames per second, three to one raw, it just doesn't work. Last try, four to one raw, and let's see if we can make it work. And it doesn't work. Again, drop frames. So seriously, uh, you might not wanna use a UHS-2 class Sandus Pro Extreme Pro card for 4K, even uh, at four to one raw. It's just not reliable enough. And by the way, look at the battery life. The camera you know, drains battery very fast not even half an hour and already the camera has dropped down to 19%. It was at 88% I think when it started. 
And in practice, I think you get about 40, 45 minutes tops. Once you connect an SSD via USB-C to the camera, the SD card will no longer function. So you can have compact flash and SSD, but you cannot have SSD and SD cards. That's a quirk of the camera. So what we're going to do is first let's format our Samsung T5. It's a 500 gigabyte card format external drive. Right now it's at XFAT. Let's go to OS X extended format external drive. And let's see how much 500 gigabytes takes. And it's ready in just a few seconds. We exit before our battery runs out. Let's go to lossless 4K DCI at 60 frames per second. And let's record. We have about 14 minutes. So the camera writes a lot of data and you better have cards that are at least 128 gigabytes to use them practically. You don't want to go for 64 gigabyte cards. I'm using it right now because that's what I have already with me. As you can see in five seconds, we have drop frames. So even with a Samsung T5 SSD, which is on the Blackmagic marketing, you cannot record lossless 4K RAW at 60 frames per second. You want to try UHD quickly. And let's see if that might work. It shouldn't make a big difference. There you are. It's drop frames, so the SSD doesn't work either. Now this raises a very important question. What card do you need to record 4K Cinema DNG lossless RAW at 60 frames per second if none of these cards work? And let me just go to 30 frames per second and try that. So this is 4K DCI at 30 frames per second. This is half the data rate. So you have the frame rate in RAW, you have the data rate. Say we can stop here. So the camera can record 4K 30 frames per second in lossless RAW, but it cannot do 4K 60p, which is a shame really and a surprise because neither the T5 nor the Compact, uh, Compact Flash SanDisk Extreme Pro card can do 4K 60 lossless. So what media type can actually do 4K 60p? We don't know, so we have to wait until Blackmagic releases their recommended card options to know exactly which card can take 4K 60p lossless. So I hope uh, this video clarifies things. You shouldn't ideally use SD cards, uh, even UHS-2 cards if you want to shoot RAW. You have to use the T5 or a compact flash cards. But in my test, at least with this particular model that has been shipped to me, I am unable to record 4K 60 lossless RAW in any of the media formats. And these are the fastest that I know of. You know, at least the T5 is definitely one of the recommended drives. Again, this could be a quirk of the camera. Maybe they're playing around with the data rates and things haven't been finalized yet. So don't make any decisions based on this video. Uh, when the camera actually ships, we might have more clarity on things. I just wanted to share this with you because of my previous video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll put an updated chart in the article that I published earlier and I'll link to it below so you can check it out. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos and hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the bell you'll see on the right so you won't miss any new videos.